Hey guys, welcome back. I'm actually at Steamforged HQ in Manchester. I'm joined by the lovely Sherwin. When you're on the channel, you're the lovely. You know? I, I didn't realize I was lovely. You are quite sure, lovely. Sure, why not? Uh, do you want to tell everyone at home who you are? They might not know your lovely face yet. Uh, my, my lovely face. Mm. Let's pretend I have one of those. <laughs> my name is Sherwin Matthews. I'm the designer at Steamforged Games. And we are very lucky to be having a quick preview about the mechanics of Elden Ring, the board game. I'm a big fan of Elden Ring. I've played a lot of it on the channel. Focus on me. Make that. Not like that. Oh, not like that. <laughs> I'll maybe try and sub. Oh, mate, he's tall. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Dark Souls, the board game as well, which we've recently played the new expansion, well, the new core sets for those as well. Cool. I'm excited to see just what you've done differently here compared to what people might have already seen. Well, so. there's a few different options, uh, and let's deep dive into thinking about how some of that works. One of the biggest things is obviously exploration. That's a sure. massive component of what Elden Ring, the video mm -hmm. game, is versus what Dark Souls is, where, sure. com where, where exploration is very much a second seat to lots of combat encounters. As you yeah, pass through sure. Things. Obviously, exploration is a big part, and it's overworld. Let you point out what we've got initially, and then essentially what I can do. Yeah, can do. sure. So uh, what, what, this is... what, what do I do? Yeah. I mean, I'm a samurai. What can I do? Can I well, you are a samurai. Stuff now, or do <laughs> I go look around first? Oh, you can look around. It's, it's entirely up to you. It's very much an open world. So we'll start on this tile here. Now, each of these hex tiles has a couple of different locations on it. Cool. You can see here, site grace here. Uh, these are material sites, these green ones. Uh, in this case, there's a abandoned places deck, which is cool. what that is. There's a, uh, a fight over here. So if you go onto this tile, you don't necessarily have to fight the enemy, but if you want to interact with it sure. on it, then you have to. Uh, these red lines are barriers. So that's mm -hmm. a cliff edge or a wall. Uh, over here, we have a stake of America that gives you lives sure. during a boss fight. And then we have a token here, which represents uh, effigies and martyr. Now, if mm -hmm. you're playing with other players, and a lot of the time you will be, you can use that to summon into their quest books. And we'll go a little bit onto that later on sure when we we'll talk about some of the combat stuff. Okay, so, cool. So, largely, your free actions, you can interact with some of these locations. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I've covered some. There's a whole bunch more of these that we can yeah, do. Yeah, sure. The other ones uh, is you can draw a tile from the top of the stack, uh, which is an explorer action, and then place it adjacent to where you currently are. So you can put it in any one of these locations. Okay. Probably wouldn't recommend putting it there behind a wall at yeah, times. Yeah, looks kind of awkward. Yeah, you have to go around. <laughs> uh, so that's that one. The last thing you can do is obviously you can move to different locations. Sure. So, okay. And, and you know, Broadly speaking, that's the most part. I mean, there's a small few, a few small things like you know consumables, that sort of stuff. But mm -hmm. for the large part, that's your main decision point you're going to be making. So, okay. For example, let's say if you wanted, to, well, I'll let you do it. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say. So these these map tiles essentially represent Limgrave, where we yes. are at the minute. And rather than being like a set board that we're going to be having, it's more like mm. a procedurally generated dungeon that we're going to be exploring, mm. which is actually quite interesting because like the, the replay value is totally determined by how how well you can shuffle these, right? When you're uh, actually exploring. Yes and no. So quests are made up of a series of tiles and that mm -hmm. isn't completely random. It's not um, procedure generated. They are specific stacks of tiles that we okay. have. And sometimes you might have to access certain areas. You might have mm -hmm. to find a map fragment or whatever okay. else. So there's a, you're right. There's a lot of replayability into it. One of the things we talked about a lot when we were looking at this is we didn't want it to be something where you know players know the exact map, so they know yeah. exactly where to go to find what different bits and pieces. Yeah, because that just leads uh, to speed running. Right? You've got it. Well, <laughs> it's simulationism to a point where there's not a game there. What 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 Elden Ring wants to be is that the board game is really a celebration of, of, of Elden Ring. It's a new way to interact with your favorite game. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be something where what we're doing is basically creating something which is such a facsimile of the video game that it just ultimately is there's no it's almost like a uh, a non-point of why you would want to play it yeah why, why would i go out and buy this when i can just play the video game you've got it outside. so so creating so creating familiar areas to players where they can find familiar locations mm -hmm. and they can see familiar enemies and so on that feels thematically correct to the sure. game is important but also giving them the idea that the space between those locations the stuff that they can interact with is is different and changes that's key yeah yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. So let's play a, a very yeah, quick sure. turn. We're going to just probably jump straight into some combat. But obviously, there's lots of things that I could be doing now. But yeah, so you would have free actions mm -hmm. as part of what your uh, as part of what your exploration turn is. So cool. you could, for example, let's explore. We'll do one of those. Yeah, sure. So we flip that over. So here we can see we found different bits and pieces. So we have a spirit spring. Uh, cool. Drop there. Yeah. And we also Torrents have merchants. available. Well, there is exactly that. And we have a merchant as well. So we'll just drop that on there and there. Okay. And this you can then put down here, for example, as we talked about behind the wall. Probably, Probably not a great idea, especially with that wall on the right. Yeah. So you can you place can that to any adjacent tile that's basically. Put it there. Exactly. You could put it there again. Same pretty sure again. walls. Or there. So that's, that's kind of, let's say we drop it down here. Cool. So that gives you an example of 
what the world looks like. You know, you, uh, that's how you slowly build things out as sure. you explore. Now, there are cards that give you objectives while you're exploring the map. It's not completely aimless wandering. Mm -hmm. uh, we held those Guidance of Grace cards. Of course. And they are something where you can use those to explore across the land. And crucially, they give you objectives and uh, goals to shoot for when you are doing bits and pieces. So yeah. very, very important to kind of really give you that drive home, that narrative and that mm -hmm. emergent kind of... Uh, experience that you have playing Elden Ring, you know, yeah. for finding different locations and then getting new objectives or you know, being led along different paths and so Yeah, on. of course. So it gives you little objectives to do, but it also adds a, almost like a time limit of like, you can explore yeah. as long as you like, but if you don't succeed in these little objectives we've given you, you are going to fail the main quest. Yeah, the greater world will, you know, will effectively... Get really <laughs> angry. Well, it's more so much just you kind of, you know, you're you're not the tarnish that is there to become Elder Lord. You're another failed kind of tarnish. Why do you suck? <laughs> Something along those lines, yeah. yeah. So you kind of, you know, your presence kind of really sort of fades a bit. We see lots of that in the Elder Ring video games. Mm -hmm. So it's very much something where, you know, this is you proving why it is you are going to become Elder Lord and of focus course. down. That, that's, that's a big element of this. And that's something where that gives you meaning for why you're exploring. Mm -hmm. But as you say, so we've done one explore action. So our next one, for example, could be to move. So we could yeah, move to here. And, I know, and you just mentioned it. So let's jump into a combat. So let's interact with something. And as I said, if you, if you have a combat on a particular tile, sure. before you can interact with anything else on that tile, you have to fight the combat. Yeah, because so, one of my, one of my quests might be to interact with these... Um, yeah, to gather resources, yeah, right? Yeah, the abandoned places, we call them. So I, if I right, interacted yeah. with one of these, I'd be able to draw. Yeah, and so... That, it might be like, collect a bunch of these. Yeah, so you could have cave moss, for example. Another bit of cave draw moss. A whole bunch of cave moss now. Nope. nope. Grey violets, another Excellent. one in there. Uh, let's see what else we find. Oh, then silver fireflies. So Sweet. these give you an idea of the sort of things you could find if you interact with the abandoned places deck. And you mm -hmm. may have a quest that tells you to gather a whole bunch of silver fireflies or sure. whatever else. It could be something where actually what you're looking to do is, you know, is just to gather generic resources. Mm. A whole bunch of different things to play around with. Of course. Do I can't combat. do that, so I'm going to have to do combat, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So combat's interesting. Obviously, just to talk for a little bit here we have here, that's the combat symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, this gives you suggested rewards. So we can see that there's, yeah, you get to draw a card as a result of this. Okay. Um, and this pen tells you what page in your quest book you go to, which we'll talk about in a moment. But sure. they're kind of a good indication of how difficult the fight's going to be, but sometimes mm -hmm. we lie. Nice. Love Sometimes that. you'll have a thing that says, you know, oh, there's lots and lots of resources if you go here and you go, oh, it's going to be a tough battle. Yeah. And you jump in, that's only really easy. There's other times when you're going to look at this and it's like, oh, yeah, look, yeah, this one's really easy because, mm -hmm. you know, like there's only one resource card. But then there's troll. many, many enemies. You troll. Got it. So yeah. we're, we're going to kind of keep you guessing on some of this. <laughs> yeah, stuff, of course. But, but we probably would be nice to start with. So mm -hmm. um, every player has their own quest book, and I'll obviously grab one of those and feel free to look at that model. Expert. Look at this, yeah. So every, every player comes gets one of these. Every right? player gets one of like these. A coloring book, uh, something like that. Now <laughs> this one's obviously one we made for the demo, so the other ones are quite a bit more chunky, mm -hmm. and they have lots and lots of pages in there for all of the combat you play. So when you actually dive into the combat zone, uh, that's all inside the quest book. Okay. And as you can see here, it tells us to go to page six. So let's just slide these yeah, out. Of course. Let's find page six. Okay, so we have the king's champion. Uh, when mere soldiers cannot challenge the enemies of Stormvale, Godric's champions take to the field. Their martial prowess is as sharp as a spear or sword, their discipline harder than steel. And it comes with an objective, which is kill the Godric Knight, and it tells you what I get to do when I win. Yeah, it tells which you is rewards. when, not if. So, yeah, exactly <laughs> it. So there we have. So that's our. Uh, that's what we're looking at here. We'll just really spin yeah. this around. We've talked quite a bit about a few of the different air systems in this, and I think mm. what I'd really like to do now is just go over some of that with you, because I think that's quite an interesting thing. Yeah, with, sure. What we've attempted to do here. So because this is something I've read about on your designer blogs mm. that you've been putting out, and it's something I was before before interacting with it. I was quite skeptical. I was a bit like, I don't really understand what that means. Hmm. And I think, hopefully, which I'm going to try and show you exactly what, what you were trying to say on paper, essentially. Yeah, it's so hard to do that. Yeah, no, I, exactly, I, I've yeah. sat down to write those blogs and I'm like, okay, I know it very precisely. I could teach someone to play this in minutes. Mm -hmm. How do I write it down? It's so much more yeah. effort. So to start with, um, mm -hmm. this is our grid. Now there's a tarnished area. That's mm -hmm. over here. There's That's an my enemy side. area. Yeah, Sweet. there's an enemy area over here. This is the battle line. Mm -hmm. Now you cannot cross this. Yeah. That's a key point. So what this uh, represents is spatial awareness mm -hmm. and also stances. Also this idea of not necessarily that you're moving backwards and forwards, more that your combat stances, what we call the battle stance system. Okay. Effectively, this is divided up into if you're moving horizontally mm -hmm. this way, then you are effectively sidestepping. So if I drop your samurai here, for example, mm -hmm. and you were to move to there, 
that's you sidestepping out of this guy's way. Okay, cool. If you are moving here, you're not necessarily moving backwards and forwards, although you can easily imagine that's maybe a step forward or a yeah. step back maybe. But crucially, what these are is these are representative of your stance. It's like This is, doesn't represent range at all. Not this at is all. just how you are Absolutely. engaging the enemy on the other yeah, side of the battle exactly line. Exactly, yeah. So this is all spatial. Mm -hmm. This, however, is not. So if the enemy is pushed back into its defensive stance, mm -hmm and you are in your defensive stance, then you can still hit this enemy. Because that's not like a, you're really far away from each other. But it's you're playing exactly it safe, same and so yeah. is he. Yeah, exactly it. Well, you obviously don't want him to be playing safe, but that's how mm -hmm. it works. So, so these are our different battle stances. Mm -hmm. So this one is the aggressive stance, or yeah. attacking stance, whichever way you want to look at it. Now this one, typically, and it's worth pointing out, all of these can change depending on the battlefield. We'll mm -hmm. come back to that in a moment. Cool. But if you're in the, def if you're in the aggressive stance, that's likely to give you lots more bonuses when it comes to attacking. Lots yeah, more okay. bonuses on combat. So I'm really going for it. Exactly. Like, it, yeah. Swords, swords wailing, just trying to kill stuff. You've got it. Okay. Now the neutral stance generally is going to mean that you've got more tactical choices to make in the game. Mm. So in this case, in this particular one, it's going to let us manipulate our marching order. That's our initiative. Okay. So that's pretty good. You know, obviously you're more taking a more measured pace to what the battle is. You sort of step back, look at what's going on, and then really react to those sort yeah. of things. The last one is the defensive stance and that's okay. really where you're you know you're, again you're taking a breather you're really guarded up you just say clear damage you exactly just clear them. Sure. yeah cool. exactly and obviously the enemies have their own stances now mm -hmm. it's worth pointing out if icons appear down here that typically means that they're for the tarnished you're interactive okay. so hence we have these ones here cool anything that appears on this side would be for enemies so okay. enemies typically don't benefit from stances very much Mostly, they're going. You're going to benefit from them having dropped an aggressive stance because mm -hmm. their guard is down because they've stepped forward to attack. Think of your, or we'll take the Godric Knight in example. This is an enemy that circles with its shield up for the entirety yep. of the time, and you will just bounce off if you try to attack. For the most part, your real job is to try and bait it forward. So when it comes forward to attack, you simply it makes an opening that you can then run in yeah. and exploit. And that's really what we're looking at because so much of Elden Ring is about breaking poise. It's about timing and mm -hmm. looking at animations and understanding attack windows. Yeah, sure. It's not exactly. Just it's not just wailing all the time. It's not just no, spamming, spamming RB or, you know, it's yeah. it's waiting for him to do the lunge, which is what he'd be doing here. And then you go and punish him for it. Exactly what we always wanted to focus on and build. Mm. So yes, absolutely. In this case, that's really what we're trying to encapsulate with this. Now, as I said, different battlefields, because there's an awful lot of this mm -hmm. in the book. We'll have this is just a quick example for sure. Absolutely. We'll have not only different objectives, which really mixes things around. It mm. might be you're trying to survive as long as you can. It might be you have to kill a specific enemy, as we do here. Yeah. It might be you have to kill every enemy, or, or yeah, there's various different things you can try to achieve. Yeah, that's something that you added to the recent Dark Souls core games, and it's something yes. that I really, really love. And it's one of my favourite parts of it, that like, every time you go into a combat, mm. it's not just go and kill everything. It's like, Okay, in this particular one, you need to kill the Godric Knight. In this particular one, this might happen, and you might have to do this instead. Yeah, you always want to have combat puzzles, right? Because yeah. that's what keeps you guessing. And the, and there's something about that which always makes you just, it almost unlocks and makes you feel really cool when you're, mm. I've got this, I yeah. know how to do this I now. I figured it out. Yeah, yeah. exactly, right? That feels smart. So we always want to engender that sort of feeling in players when they're playing this. One of the biggest things I always talk about when I talk about Elden Ring is when you're walking around this landscape, one of the best things about the game is it's this expanse that you're exploring across mm. you're seeing on the horizon ruins you're seeing you know all this amazing kind of landscape this yeah. this huge terrain in, open, open in front of you and you know you are just exploring you're not too worried about enemies and so on but mm -hmm. as soon as you do fight that one enemy as soon as that does the whole world shrinks down to just you and them and yeah, that's exactly. effectively what this dual system represents because in this case think very much of the gatefront ruins actually funnily enough where this is mm -hmm. from and and you know you have the you have the godric mm -hmm. knight in front of you and the it's you versus that knight. Yeah. And the whole world else shrinks down to that. And it's really very, very cinematic. Exactly. And that's exactly what this is replicating. It's the intimacy of that combat. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're driving at. Now, obviously, not always is it only one person. And that's a key point. It mm -hmm. can be that you're facing all of them. But you generally tend to keep them in front of you and try to sidestep and, and be able to react to the, how they work. So yeah, sure. that's exactly what we're seeing with this here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so Let's play some combat. Absolutely. Key things, you're going to shoot, you have two different decks. Mm -hmm. You have an attack deck and you have an effect deck. 
Cool. Uh, so this attack deck is, is made up of all your different equipment cards. Mm -hmm. So for example, you have your sword here, you have your shield here. Mm -hmm. That lists what attack cards you have. To create your attack deck, you simply shuffle the cards from those together and oh. create a deck. And if you were to upgrade that with you know, better card, you know, then you get better cards from that gear. Mm -hmm. If you were to change that sword for something else, let's say you change it for an axe, um, then the axe card will tell you what new cards go in. So you yeah. will take out the cards listed on this card because it's gone and shuffle in the axe ones instead. Cool. And obviously different weapons will have different properties. Some of them might be slower to use or faster mm -hmm. to use or whatever else. Um, and obviously, if you want to dual wield, you can do that. You won't have any defensive capability. Don't do that. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bad idea. Let me solo head. Bring um, it in like, no, I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Yeah, you absolutely <laughs> can. You can even if you want a two-handle weapon, in which nice. case you're going to get rid of that. And that'll give you some attack buffs. But again, it's a bold move because you're yeah. not going to have much ability to defend yourself. So so the equipment essentially is like a mini deck building game. Oh, 100%. But then we move on to the effect deck, which is definitely a deck building game. Mm -hmm. So the effect deck really represents your characteristics, your primary ones like strength, and decks, and faith. In. Okay. And what that's doing is that's letting you scale. So mm. different weapons, um, and we'll see this when we start playing, but different weapon types will have uh, the same sort of level of scaling as what you see in the, uh, in the main video game. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, you have a longsword, a longsword will scale off of strength. Well, cool. guess what? Your attack deck, if it ha your effect deck, if it has loads of um, strength cards in it, will give you more benefits from using that weapon. Wicked. So you can really tailor your character and custom build them so that way you're either building more spread out damage. So mm -hmm. you've got a nicer sort of yield when you're actually doing that and you've got more reliable damage or you can go deeper into strength and then trigger more interesting effects like more pushes or more uh, staggers yeah. and that sort okay, of stuff. Okay, cool. Because that all so kind of leave. balances off of that. You can yeah. really customize that exactly how you want your character to be. Right in time to find your new weapon and then think about, am I a strength build? Am I a dex build? How do I want to build this? Yeah, sure. So, so with me being a samurai, I'm expecting to see a dex build, right? Well, let's find out. Let's find so, out. Uh, you have a hand size, so mm -hmm. you're going to draw up to this. So that's four. Cool. Now that hand size represents, I haven't, I haven't sat these at all. This could be a terrible hand. It could be. We've got two deep slashes. We've got a light attack and we've got a deflect. You have got a defense card. There so we there we are. We've got a mix. Look yeah, it. so this one comes from your shield. These are from your uh, primary weapons. Mm -hmm. So the key thing we've got here is this represents your stamina. Okay. So you can wail away at these enemies and mm -hmm. use all of your cards to attack them. But much like your stamina in the video game, yeah. once you've done that, you've got no way to defend yourself. So okay, be very, cool. very careful with that. Mm -hmm. Flip side is if you spend your entire time hiding and putting all your stuff into dodging away and trying to avoid yeah. being attacked, guess what, you aren't going to have much capability to do anything at that mm. point or attack-wise because you have used up all those cards. Sure. The other way your stamina is represented is by your uh, actions. So your action economy is you have three actions, I should say. So just and like exploration, it's still three actions. Still three, so that's constant. And you can draw a card mm -hmm. uh, up to your hand size. Uh, well, I should be on your hand size, but you have to discard down at the end of the round. Okay, so I can, if, let's say I did have all combat and I was... Well, all attacking cards, I could draw another card in my action to try and get a shield and then yeah, discard absolutely. one afterwards. And then discard one afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, you can play a card, fairly straightforward. We'll cool. talk about that in a moment. Or you can move. Now, normally you can only move orthogonally. However, because every class has their own ability, mm -hmm. the samurai can actually move diagonally, Wicked. which means as well as sidestepping, you can change your stance, which mm -hmm. is a really, really big advantage. Such very a small thing, but it's yeah, yeah, exactly. You are you are very swift as a character, which yeah. is really obviously really cool. And each playable character has their own type of ability. The samurai Absolutely. is just they're very good at changing stance while moving around the board. You've got it. They're very fluid. Mm -hmm. uh, a vagabond, for example, is really defensive, very uh, very sort of block centric, and cool. and they get bonuses for actually doing damage as a counter attack okay. when they block. So anyway, so key thing, obviously, as mm -hmm. well as this, uh, we should talk about timing. Uh, each enemy has a behavior card. Okay. Um, each, sam each samurai, each samurai, uh, each samurai that's samurai, playing. But each target <laughs> as well has their own profile, has their own initiative card even, okay. as well as their profile and their other bits. To make these cards, uh, to make your marching order, which is the initiative track, you sure. grab these cards, you shuffle them. Cool. And then we deal them out. Now, a key thing about this, obviously, when we first get into combat, mm -hmm. you've got a lane here where you can deploy yourself. That's okay. actually marked. It's not always, but for this particular one, tutorial, so it wants to give you a bit of a guide. Uh, you can choose what stance you want to be in. Having had a look at these cards here, mm -hmm. you can now make that decision. So I'll quickly remind you, if you're here, you get more defensive capabilities. Uh, sure. You just get to draw a card at the end of the round. Which I have a full turn. hand right now, so right. it's probably okay. This one lets you manipulate the marching order, i.e. move your card on here, mm -hmm. so it gives you more chance to go first or wait for the enemy to move and then cool. you know, exploit their weaknesses. This one, if you're in this lane, if you're in an attack, sorry, this row and you're in attacking stance, you do more damage when you attack with the higher likelihood of you doing it because you'll draw extra cards and choose what you want to use. Okay, cool. Um, and if the enemy is in this lane, mm -hmm. sorry, in this row, then you get to do more damage to them as well because you get an extra card flip again. Wicked, okay. 
Well, well, we'll play it safe and we'll go right in the middle and we'll land there then. So okay. we, uh, we can manipulate Enough. the Makes marching sense. order or the initiative and then see what's going to happen there. Okay, right, well, let's find out. So we'll do this. Well, you get to move it. Uh, you could move until after the night, but I don't know necessarily you that want to. That seems pretty dumb, so thanks for shuffling that. It's come out pretty well. I did it right there, didn't I? Yeah. So that moves into our attacks. So the samurai will go first, unsurprisingly, because mm -hmm. that's that. So you could do three actions. You could draw a card, you could attack, and so on. So okay. Well, I think it'd be very rude not to um, move in. Oh, you're going to move starts to a more aggressive stance. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll trigger a deep slash. I think. So these are your attack cards. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about it. So this is your attack area. This tells you what you're attacking. So this one says you can attack one square in front of you in your lane. Okay. So you choose one, and obviously you're going to choose here for obvious reasons. Yeah. So I again, not to do with range, would I just, if it, let's say these two were here, I could just you choose, 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 you I just still choose, choose who I hit in Absolutely. that one. Cool. So it's not like I have to hit the first one. It's just I choose one in this lane. Absolutely. Yeah. Wicked. So again, this is not spatial. This is absolutely here. So with that in mind, uh, you now have this. Mm -hmm. uh, this indicates to you um, what. So in a moment, you're going to pull cards from your effect deck. Okay. And this tells you what the symbols on those cards represent. Now, this is the generic symbol. This mm -hmm. means what any symbol you draw can count as generic. And there are also some cards with generic symbols on cool. them. If you draw this, it will do one damage per symbol you allocate to it. Wicked. Okay. This one is the deck symbol. Uh, nice. If you draw one of those. Samurai decks. You've got it. <laughs> uh, you knew it. You called it. So for every deck symbol you have, and that one's very specific, you only trigger that with a deck symbol. Okay. Uh, you do one damage mm -hmm. and you cause one bleed token. Nice. Uh, bleed. Unsurprisingly, it's that right thing, right? Uh, you sure draw up bleed. Uh, if you get three bleed tokens, that will then proc, and then that will do three damage to the, three okay. burst damage to the enemy. So, yeah. with that in mind, you've played this. So, because you played a card, mm -hmm. uh, you now get to draw a card from the effect deck. Now, okay. a normal proce procedure would be you draw a card, Cost. and then you resolve what's on there. Mm -hmm. Because you're in the aggressive stance, uh, yep. you get to draw an additional card, and because the enemy is vulnerable because they're in the they're actually in their own aggressive stance. So be you get three. to draw three wow, and okay. choose which one you want to use. So that's cool. what I said makes you more reliably do damage and a higher damage output. Mm. That's why. Essentially, you just attacked, even though it's, we're just set up. But like that's we, we've seen an opening and we're going for it. You've got it, yeah. Cool. Okay, so I'll draw three cards then. So we've got a, a so generic the moment symbol. if we were to play that, we do one damage. Cool. And then, okay. Uh, so that would mean we could do one damage, and then we do another damage, and we do a bleed. So cool. it to be two damage and one bleed token. Yeah, so basically, as I draw, I can go, okay, that's pretty good, but this one I could choose yeah. to use this one. But yeah. and I get third to draw one three. Is just dex. Two bleed. Okay. So it's always important to look at what the stats and the enemies are. Mm -hmm. So the Godric Soldier has two health. Cool. So in this case, if we were to do this one, you'd just fly out, kill it. You do two damage and a bleed token. You wouldn't need the bleed token. Kill yeah. the Godric Soldier. So these essentially get discarded. I'm going to say I'm resolved this one. Yep. I apply this symbol to here, which does one damage and causes bleed. And then I apply the next one to that to cause it. Yeah, so you add the two damage together. So that's two damage cool. total. Because uh, it had armor, you'd reduce it by that. Cool. Fortunately, the Godric Soldier doesn't. So that's good. That's so handy. The Godric Soldier does that. So you have defeated the Godric Soldier. Wicked. So he's okay. dead. This card, which is its initiative card, mm -hmm. uh, goes out of the marching order. Sweet. So okay. You add two. So that was your second action. You move one yeah. to move forward. Or oh, sorry, to drop into an aggressive stance. One to attack. Mm -hmm. uh, so now these cards will go. These are going to our discard pile next to it. And here. And um, now you've got one action left. So it's worth putting out. Obviously, you've got reduced stamina now because you made an attack. Mm -hmm. You could draw a card to get back up to what that is. You could also move into a more neutral stance, and that way you're ready to receive the next attack. Mm -hmm. Entirely up to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, we may as well use this ability while we can. We're going to diagonally move, Ooh. which is a unique to the samurai, into that more neutral stance. Very interesting that you move into where the sort of night is, but I think it's because you're trying to make a more interesting video, possibly. So yes, we'll, find yeah, well, we'll, we'll find out. We'll see what happens. Or oh, berserker bravery. One I mean, two. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how this works. Mm -hmm. So. The God, the special called enemy card, because your turn is now over, and we go along to the next card with the highest initiative that isn't obviously used, exhausted. So here we have uh, the health, mm -hmm. and if you had armor, it would have an armor value here as well. Okay, and again that reduced the damage incoming, You've so this it. all applies at the same time. You've got it. Wicked. Okay. So this is its attack area. Mm -hmm. This is how much damage it does. So slightly different to you. Uh, okay. This will do a fixed amount of damage rather than having a card flip and you flip a card to see what you defend. Okay. Because we always want it to be something where that's player facing rather mm -hmm. than doing the enemy stuff. So this is what you do. So it does four damage. Now this symbol here indicates that if it does this behavior, mm -hmm. and if it can't, it won't. Then it, but if it does, then it won't do any more of these behavior lines. If okay. It can't do this behavior. So let's say for a moment you're here, so it can't make this attack because it's going to be able to attack you in a minute. It wouldn't do that. Instead, it would then do the next lines. Okay. So 
In this case, it's here, so it can attack you. It's going to hit you for four. Great. That was but a you, silly move then. <laughs> it was, but hey ho, you're demonstrating how this works. So, Cause. so now at this point, you've got a couple of options. Mm -hmm. We obviously have attack cards, they look mm -hmm. like this. This is a defense card, unsurprisingly, the big shield to give away. Handy. And you'll notice that in the format, it's very similar to here. So this gives you an indication of what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So when you play a defense card, you block, and at that point, for every symbol you allocate to this, and remember that generics, you can allocate any symbol to this, cool. you get to block one damage. And in this case, you get to draw one card. This is a uh, deflect. So okay, it gives you cool. ability to refresh your hand. Wicked, okay. Now, that's the, and obviously that's the sort of thing you find on a light shield, for example. So less damage absorption, but instead mm -hmm. more kind of, you know, more stamina recursion, which is, you know, these are the sort of options you're making. One mm -hmm. of the key things we wanted to do with this is create an engine that's really straightforward to pick up and learn and just mm -hmm. go, right, I've got it. I know how to play this game. Now. Yeah, but it's a very and similar system, right? You know, you've got so. it. And all of the depth comes in kind of thinking, okay, so how do I want to build my character now? What's the mm. focus? You know, do I want to be super tanky? Do I want this to be something where I'm built around the recursion? Strategically, there's lots and lots of meaningful decisions to make. Yeah. The actual core engine is pretty straightforward for you to learn so it doesn't get so bogged down in complexity that you yeah. kind, of, kind of scratch your head and oh, how do I do this again? I mean, that's always been the biggest complaint about like people picking up a new game is that yeah. when it's like, okay, yeah, that looks really fun, but is it going to take me three hours to learn? You've got it. You know, whereas yeah. this is like, here's a very simple system and it's the same whether you're attacking or defending, it's the same for them. They're always just going to apply that damage straightforward, for example. Yeah. So. The, the best mark of like a good system is always simplicity <coughs> is, is the is the straightforward point. Mm -hmm. And then you can still layer lots of depth into that without having to need, you know, without having to put in like lots of just overlapping rules to try and really make it shine. So, cool. Okay. Well, anyway, that's my take. I mean, yours may be different. So, okay. <laughs> so, so uh, anyway, so we're being attacked. So you've got sure. a couple of choices. Option one, I can just take all of the damage and take four damage. That'd be you've got awful. six health. Uh, sorry, you've got five health even you should have. So that's not the worst thing in the world to keep you alive, okay. but you're going to be limping pretty bad after mm -hmm. that. Or you could play a block card, uh, in which case you're going to do a flip, as we've seen there, and then mm -hmm. see what you can block. The other thing you can do uh, is you can discard any number of cards from your hand, mm -hmm. and they will reduce the incoming damage by one per card. Now, okay. you will do this before you flip your block card if you're making a block as well. Okay, so I can say I'm going to deflect, but also I'm going to discard these two to reduce yeah. the damage so by two. So in which case there's only two incoming, it gives you a much higher it. chance of blocking it. Okay. Now the key thing is obviously you're doing that before, so it's a bit of a risk reward because you could draw really well for this. Yeah, sure, I could uh, draw other, a five or yeah, exactly. Like yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. The other thing is, is obviously that's going to use up all of your stamina when mm, you're being attacked. Very that's tired where I talk samurai. to you about. That's where I talk to you about. Think about that stamina bar. Think about yeah, how it's moving sure. up and down. You have to constantly sort of adapt and you know look at what the enemy's going to be doing because mm -hmm. you can read their behaviors. That's you reading their tells. What the advantage the battlefield is going to give you so you can understand how to move around. For okay. example, if you stay here, you can guarantee you're going to go first or second in this next round because yeah, there's only because one I, I can manipulate that margin out there. But you're not getting any attack, any offensive or defensive bonuses. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, okay. back to this. What would you like to do? Okay, well, I think what I'll do is I will play Deflect because that sounds Okay, did sounds you want to discard any other cards? I will, di I will discard a Light Attack because I'm going to be... I'm gonna, I, I have to play this anyway and I'm going to be redrawing a card. So I'm going to yeah, discard okay. that to reduce it by one. Okay, so there's... Free damage incoming now, mm -hmm. so let's flip over an effect card and see what you get. There we go. So, roll Fantastic. Two. So you've got two, so you block two, mm -hmm. uh, and then you get to draw two cards as a result of this, because obviously one card. But crucially, there was three coming in, so you've taken one damage. So that drops down by one. Wicked. Unfortunately, well, sort of. <laughs> this goes to here. <laughs> Could it be worse. To here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, you get to draw two cards, though. Okay, cool. So we've drawn a sidestep and a... Sidestep. Okay. Excellent. So not, too, not a bad hand. Go. So it's done this. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's hanged the that. And because that symbol there, it doesn't now resolve the next two actions. Cost. Because otherwise, as we said, it'd just keep going until it's the end of the You've card. got it. Yeah, exactly. It, which, you know, would give you also extra attacks. Mm -hmm. Not all enemies will have that luxury. So some of them will be a lot more frenetic. Because this is a grunt, right? a whole bunch of damage. Yeah, as, as grunts go. It's a slightly a tougher grunt than yeah. what you might find otherwise. But a shiny yeah. grunt. Well, you already <laughs> killed the poor Godric soldier horribly. I mean, yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's a round of combat. And what would happen next is obviously any uh, other enemies would then activate. And if you were in a boss fight or something where there's more than one tarnished, if you summon another tarnish into your combat, then they would get to resolve that as well, which mm. obviously works pretty well. Now, in terms of the next round, you would then shuffle this Yeah. in the meantime. And if we're now playing with other people, they would now go back to their part where they're exploring the map. 
Okay, so, so this point. is like an isolated incident. Uh, 100%. Right. That's the way everyone has their own quest book because ultimately we want this to be something where you zoom in. Mm. A key thing that happens a lot with combats when you have more involved games is, mm. you know, oh, we've dived into combat, fantastic. Well, someone goes to make a cup of tea, someone starts picking up their phone and checking out their socials. Me, every yeah. role-playing game I've ever played. Exactly, <laughs> right, yeah. Especially in the age of COVID where everyone's playing online. Uh -huh. <laughs> the yeah. point is, is that, yeah, everyone has now kind of got a million and one other things away from the table they're doing. Everyone is disconnected, not the best. Yeah, sure. What we wanted very much with this is to really reduce player downtime, really increase agency. Everyone is working together, whether that be working together to achieve the objectives given to you by the Guidance of Grace cards, Cough. whether that's be something where your downtime at the table is really reduced, whether that be something where you know everyone's engaged, going, oh, how do you need us to jump into your combat and help? You know, do you want yeah. us to summon into your combat, into your book? and fight and also it allows you that personal combat level i talked about that yeah bit where it's a duel between you and your enemies yeah because exactly. it zones in exactly yeah, yeah. and about. obviously what's nice about this as well is you know not only is the agency of this pretty quick you've got the same three actions so there's parity between obviously exploration and then mm. combat but we resolve through this and we we'll just flip this over so that would be your new marching order cool. so when it comes back around to you you play another round of combat and then you can keep on going and obviously yeah. at some point when you eventually defeat your enemy you'll go back to the board you'll flip this over because that enemy is just uh, very much dead. Mm -hmm. And then you can carry on exploring. Someone else may be doing their own fight at this point. Okay. Obviously, that's what happens. Now, the nicest part about what this is, because there's a couple of things the book gives us which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. One is ease of setup. Yeah, because so, I mean, I thought, like, we start with one single hex tile for exploration and then we just flip to the right page and it tells us. You've got it. So, I mean, what's nice about this is that setting up our different battle grids is simply a just a case of going to the page and mm -hmm. it's all here. If we have terrain on this, it's actually marked out on there. So, okay. you don't, so, so it might be an impassable bit, or there might be a wall that gives you a certain bonus if you're behind it. It might be something interesting happens in terms of while the battle happens, you know, while the, during the battle, it tells you, oh, well, at this point, turn the page and suddenly the battlefield has changed because okay. some other dynamic effect has nice. happened. It could even be that we push another book up to it and now you've been ambushed and now there's enemies behind you or something along those wow. lines. Okay. There's an awful lot we can do with this, which is really exciting, as well as cha just simply changing the icons down here. Yeah. I can imagine a sort of you know, a boggy ground, for example, where actually, depending on what lane you're in, actually restricts your movement, perhaps, for example. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, or ones where enemies get more advantages here, for example. And that's where manipulating the order of how enemies are you know, pushing them around and dodging yourself and you know, what stances you're in is yeah. very, very important. So, so, so the, that's a key thing. Yeah, so the variety not only comes from the enemies having their own behavior cards like we've seen in other games that we've produced, but like the whole fact that these will be changing per board. Enemies might get a buff if they're closer or further away, hmm. and it's going to be a different objective every time. Exactly it. And yeah, there's obviously a nice feature visual to this as well when you summon someone into your combat book. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm playing and if you're playing in this and you're struggling to kill the knight, for example. He did just do a number on me, so. Well, there is this. So if I'm the vagabond, I can summon into this. So uh -huh. maybe I can, oh, I'll help you. I can use one of my tokens, my uh, effigies of the martyr, to summon into your combat. I can choose wherever I want to appear. And now I'm summoned into your combat, which was really thematic to the yeah. actual video game, video game experience. You're using that to do that. But not only that, there's a nice element as well where when we actually do come together, so let's say we fight the boss at the end, this mm -hmm. uh, lovely fellow here. Hello. Um, oh, exactly. Yeah. That's the best way to say him. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so when we do get as far as this big bear, yeah, this big beastie, mm -hmm. what we then do is all of the players push their quest books together to make one big map that they play wow. on. Okay. So then we've got this sense that you know, no longer are we isolated individuals exploring out together and occasionally coming across each other for these combats. Yeah. Now we're pushing all the books together and we're finding a much more power, you know, a much a much more uh, involved, you know, um, communal kind of adventure. Yeah, and I, I sure. think that's a there's a lovely visual to that, which I think really resonated with people from what we've seen so far. Yeah, so again, you get you kind of get like this the exploration phase. Like you've all got a common goal, you kind of get to do your own thing. Yeah. And like you know, if you want to wander off and go and chat to the merchant and buy everything you can, and then someone else wants to go and just do every combat that they get near because they love combat. And then when you do complete all of those goals to find a boss, for example, yeah. you come together and then rather than being isolated, you all come back together and work together and then try and kick his head in. I guess. Pretty much. Yeah. Wicked. Okay. And that's combat. I think what we probably what we've not seen. If if I've like explored this entire map and I've found the boss, what happens after I beat the boss? Have you got that far yet? Like, Absolutely. So does when, this map come back out or is it like we no, start no, a new the, one? So or? once you've once you've won the combat, uh, you'll take the map. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll break the map away because obviously, as soon as you get into the boss combat, the map is gone. You're going to move okay. that way. You found the dungeon, now you're in the dungeon, you're going through. Mm -hmm. Irrespective of whether that's got some smaller fights and then the boss fight or just straight to the boss fight, either way, you're now in that dungeon. Of course. 
Once you've won that boss fight, um, your your quest is complete, or even if you failed your quest, your quest is failed. Whichever okay. way, you're going back to the round table hold. Uh, the round table hold is where you can trade with merchants, mm -hmm. although obviously there are some in the overland as well, but that's where there's other trading to be done. That's where you can get some additional quests from NPCs. Yeah. It's where you can do things like level up and mm. you can actually upgrade your decks, obviously increase your stats as we talked about. Cool. You can upgrade your equipment by using smithing stones or the blacksmith and kind of you know get to improve your deck here. Mm -hmm. You can uh, buy new items. You can I think do I everything you, you all the you other know, things, you know. craft all sorts of stuff. Yeah, you know, it, that, that's really your hub cool. for you to then interact with the game sure. and then choose where you want to go to next. Because as you are going through this, you're finding new areas of the, of the world to explore and building up that way. Wicked. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, I think we've pretty much covered all the the main mechanics of Elden Ring. I think uh, so. I, that's it's pretty cool. I can't wait to play more. I like again. This was I was really skeptical about. But it's actually way more involved than you actually realise when you just look and it's just like, oh, it's just a hex system where it's, it's not. It's just completely different. And again, the, the speed of setup is amazing and the, the variety that you're going to be able to experience with just turning a page and it's a whole new game, even though, you know, this might look similar, but who knows what this is going to say and what these are going to say, you know? So, excited. So, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate oh, no, it. I appreciate it. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions about Elden Ring, hopefully I can answer some. And if not, I'll, I'll badger you so I can tell everyone at home <laughs> sure. um, anything about that. So, uh, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, catch you next time. Bye. Bye, guys.